Still on there. There he is. Come here, Bubba. Yes, sir. <laughs> Today, I'm just out here doing a little bit of punching for you guys. It's one of my favorite ways to catch them during this time of the year. When you're getting into August, September, you got a lot of mass that start to develop on any lake that really has vegetation. And so punching is one of the best ways to catch them. But if you don't do a few things right when you're punching, you can miss a lot of fish or lose a lot of fish. So today we're gonna go through it all and we're gonna catch some fish. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by Monster Bass. You have probably heard of Monster Bass before. This is a subscription service that will send a box box full of lures to your doorstep every single month. Now the thing that I love about Monster Bass that really separates it from companies that are similar is that they really try to help you to become a better angler. Not only do they send you lures, but they're going to send you lures that work in your area of the country and they're going to send you information on how to fish those lures. So if you guys would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, you can click that link for Monster Bass down below in the description. Now today what I'm fishing is actually what you would consider a chopped up grass mat. This is actually not vegetation that normally mats over. It's, it's vegetation that's been chopped off over on the main lake, it's been pushed in by the wind and has really compacted into mats. This is eelgrass, but this happens with all, pretty much every species of grass. I mean, coontail, milfoil, hydrilla. And I actually really like the chopped grass mats because there's almost always canopies under them. You will get into areas where hydrilla, coontail, it's all too thick for the bass to actually get under. But if it's chopped grass, it's floating. It's been pushed into an area. There's always a good canopy under it, and that's where you're going to catch those fish is in that canopy under the mat. Oh. Oh. That's good. Let's go, baby. When you're out here punching, the hook set is the number one thing that is going to cause you to either miss fish or lose fish. And the big thing that you don't wanna do on a hook set is slack line them. And slack lining means that when you go to set the hook, you drop slack in that line before you set it. Now, when you do that, you will actually pop a bass's mouth open with that big weight that we're using today. And when you pop it open just a little bit, it allows that hook to pass through without hooking into that bass and you will miss a lot of fish. So if you noticed on that fish that I just caught, when he bit, I literally let him pull me down. I wanted that line to be tight and then I just reared back on him. I didn't set the hook really, really hard either. That's the other big thing. If you set the hook too hard, because you're so close, you can also rip a big hole in that fish's mouth and you'll lose that fish. So don't slack line the hook set, make sure you're tight and don't set the hook way too hard and you're gonna land and catch a lot more fish on the punch rig. <clears throat> there he is. Yo, oh, let's go, baby. Let's go. Look at that. See that? I mean, just through the roof of the mouth. That is perfect. That fish will never come off if it's like that. And if you see there, it wasn't a really hard hook set. I more or less leaned into that fish, but again, on a tight line. Gosh, this is so much fun. I could do this every stinking day for the rest of my life. You know, one of the biggest things that I have found that really helps me to be a lot more successful when I'm punching mats like this is actually the way that you pump the rod. If you see here, I'm pumping the rod every time I flip, probably anywhere from about eight to 10 times. And I just pump that rod under that mat, pump that rod, and I keep doing that. And what you will find out is that there will be days when you're out there on the water where every time you flip in there, 
a bass bites it on the initial fall. And you, you do see that a lot. And if they're biting it on the initial fall, then a lot of times you don't have to worry about pumping it eight or 10 times the rest of the day. But if you're finding that it takes those bass a little, uh, kind of a while to find your bait, this is a way that you can really catch bass when no one else can because a lot of guys are going to get impatient so if you pump that rod eight or ten times and that bass hits it on the fifth or sixth time a lot of guys are going to miss those bites they're going to pitch it in there they're going to pump it two or three times they're going to pull it out they're going to move on and there are days on the water especially after cold fronts when mat fishing can be really good that you will find that every bass hits it on the eighth or ninth pump in there so just keep that in mind when you're out there fishing mats is that pumping that rod a lot and kind of figuring out when those bass are going to hit it is very key into catching more bass. Now, as you can see here, my punching setup is really, really simple. I have a bobber stopper, I have a one ounce weight, I have a four-aught trocar flipping hook, and then I have one of my favorite soft plastics to punch with, which is a Zoom Speed Curl. Now, the big thing when it comes to soft plastics is you typically want something that's a little bit more small, a little bit more compact. That really just helps it to get through that mat a little bit easier without it hanging on all the vegetation. Now, anytime you are punching through matted vegetation, it's really important to tie your hook on with a snow knot. And what that snow knot does is when you set the hook on that fish, it'll kick that bait up just like that, which helps to hook that fish. You know, something that is huge in fishing in general, and I'm sure if you've been fishing for a while, you know this, is that bass almost always group together. There are so many times where you will go a long time without getting bit and then you will hit a stretch and it's like, bam, one, two, three, four. And literally that's exactly what has happened to me just here. You know, I, I spent about an hour this morning flipping some other stuff that didn't look great. And I got into this area and within about five minutes, I caught one. And then about five minutes later, I caught another one. And then about 10 minutes later, I just caught that one. And that is what you see so much of the time when you are fishing, but also especially when you are fishing mats. Because I've seen lakes before where it's like, man, the whole lake is just mats after mats after mats. But you will get into these small little areas where you start catching a lot of fish. So anytime you get bit, put the brakes on, really pick that area apart, and you will be surprised just how many bass you can catch in a small area. Now, one big thing that I've noticed across the country with the weight that you choose to go with is the lighter the weight that you can punch through that cover with, the more bites that you're going to get. If you can get away with using a three quarter ounce weight to punch through a mat, then use that. If, if, it, if you have to have an ounce and a quarter, an ounce and a half just to get through the mat, then, then that is fine. But a lot of times the bigger weight that you use, the more problems that you will run into with hooking up and landing those fish. So the lighter weight that you can go with, the more bites you are going to get and the more fish you are going to land. One of the biggest things that people make a mistake of when they're fishing this way is really just being in a rush. You know, they're not letting that bait soak in there a lot of times as long as they should. And the other big part that they rush is really actually when they get bit. You know, you're fishing a soft plastic. Bass will hold on to a soft plastic for a while. You know, even if there's a one ounce weight attached to it, they'll hold on to it for a minute. So when that fish bites it, don't just you know, react crazy, give that, make sure you're doing everything right to set the hook the right way so that you don't miss out on that fish. Cause this is a big fish technique. Like you can catch some of the biggest bass of your lifetime doing this exact technique. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect example of exactly what I was just talking about. It was a mistake on my end, but it was a perfect example. That fish right there, I'm not sure if you saw that, but that sucker had that bait for like, I don't know, several seconds. I mean, he hung on to it. It, it literally, as soon as I flipped it in there, it was just dead weight. And I thought maybe it was a fish, but it was really hard to tell. And so I just kind of kept, you know, working the bait and then he all of a sudden kind of moved off and I set the hook. I mean, he hang on to that bait for a long time there. You know, something else about that fish that I just caught is that that fish was actually at the roof of the mat. You know, a lot of times you will find 
that bass will be right up underneath the roof of the mat. Instead of being on the bottom under that mat, they'll be right on the underside of it. And so sometimes you will actually catch fish. This is something that I also learned from Mikey Balls is by raising that bait to the roof of the mat and actually bouncing it on the underside of the mat. And sometimes the bass will see that and they'll come up and pick that bait on the underside of that mat and pull you down. So just always be paying attention when you're fishing this way as to where the bass are biting it. Are they hitting it on the bottom? Are they hitting it on the underside of that mat? Because keying up on that can really separate you and help you to start catching a lot more fish. Now, I just wanna point out something when you're looking at these mats, cause it can be a little bit overwhelming. But if you kind of look, we have this chopped up eelgrass mat right here in front of us. Now, kind of towards the edge of this stuff, it's a little bit more sparse. It's not as thick, but if you look like right up in here and right up in here, those little areas right there, it almost looks like a different color. You know, right up in there too is the same way. It almost looks like a different color. And that is where that mat is the thickest. And anywhere you have that thick mat, that is typically where those bass are going to be. So instead of, you know, flipping every square inch of it, I'm not really flipping some of this outside stuff that isn't thick at all. I'm really just concentrating my time on this thick region when it's, it's only about five foot wide and it stretches all the way down here. But that is where that bass is going to be. Bass fishing is really all about the percentages. You know, if you do something better than the next guy by 10% here and 10% and there and 10% and over here, oh, that is exactly, <laughs> as I'm talking about it, I just made the biggest mistake. This is exactly what happens so much of the time. Bass fishing is all about percentages. If you can do something better than a guy, 10% here, 10% there, 10% there, that means you're gonna be 30% better than him at fishing. And I just got done talking about the hook set. That fish right there, it literally scared me. I went to pick up and he shot off and I absolutely set the hook way too hard. Like I didn't think about it at all. I literally just made the mistake that I was talking about. And so that is what really can separate a good angler and a great angler is, yeah, I've caught four or five fish through here, but that was a six fish. I don't know, maybe that was a five pounder for all I know. And if I catch that fish, it makes a big difference. If I don't, which I obviously didn't, it also makes a big difference. So paying attention to the details is so, so critical. Gosh, not a big one, but that fish actually just busted something right there, flipped right on top of his head and he came up there and got it. And so, you know, one thing that's really important when you are flipping and pitching is your rod that you're using. You do not want a baroom stick. I know that everyone feels like they need to have the stiffest rod they can to get these fish out. But man, if you have a stiff rod, all you're going to do is rip holes in fish, which is going to cause you to lose a lot of fish. As you can see, that fish right there, I mean, he was like five feet away from me. If I had a broomstick in that situation, even if I set the hook light, I'm probably gonna rip a hole in that fish and he's going to come off. This rod here is a seven foot, 11 inch, heavy power rod, fast action, but it actually has a little bit more of a parabolic bend to it. It bends a little bit further down the blank. And that's really what you want. You want a little bit more of a parabolic bend. You do not want a broomstick when you're doing this. You know, that little bit more of a parabolic bend in that rod really absorbs a lot of energy. So when you set the hook on a fish, that, that rod is going to take up that energy. It's going to set the hook without it ripping big holes and you're going to not lose as many fish. Now this particular rod is an ARC Tharp Series Guntersville Special Rod. I got it paired up with an 8.1 to one gear ratio reel and 50 pound braided line. When I am punching, like I talked about earlier, I tie my hook on with a snell knot. Now, if you wanna know more about basically all the knots that you need to know in bass fishing, I'm gonna leave a link for a video right here where I bring on guys like Hunter Shyrock, Mikey Balls, Tyler Anderson, and they all talk about their favorite knots that they like to tie when it comes to bass fishing. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you're gonna like that one. Comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.